Ah, dinky do. Hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue. And I'm live on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock sharp, 2200 hours, British summertime, on Facebook Live, one of the world's top broadcast platforms, with one hour of the Scotty McClue Show. Superb, scintillating information, education and entertainment for your edification and delight. So much to talk about tonight and so little time to do it in. And uh, we're not going to talk politics for the whole programme, you'll be very glad to hear. But we do have a lot of subjects for discussion. So spread the word that Scotty McClure is live on Facebook Live. Dennis McLaughlin's watching Ian Walker, Jane MacDonald, James Forbes, Andy Taylor, George Raffinale Heaney and uh, Stevie McKenzie. <clears throat> Excellent stuff. So glad you could make it, guys. Couple of fantastic broadcasts for you. One, the promo for this morning. And the other, of course, is uh, the Periscope broadcast that you'll see being bandied about on Facebook. So much to uh, do social media-wise as well. Uh, LinkedIn, a lot of you are joining me on LinkedIn. Tremendous. A lot of you are following me on Periscope. A lot of you are following me on Twitter, and a lot of you are on the Facebook pages here. Now, if there's any problem with the broadcast, please do tell me. I had a friend said, he said, I tried to get you last week. He said, and I couldn't find the broadcast on the Facebook page. And it was during the broadcast. So do please let me know if there's any problem. We're live, we're global, we're on the world's top talk show, and I am Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster. Now then, hello Scotty, says Julianne Scott. Tremendous stuff. Scotty, there's a heat wave coming. I think I'm going under my duffel coat. Uh, so there you are. Fantastic stuff. Now, uh, so much to talk about tonight. I would like to mention the uh, Brexit setup. I think the timetable is totally wrong uh, for what's happening there. I think what we should have done is had the Scottish referendum first to see who's about and if the Scots were into the UK or not. Then I think what we should have done is found out that all the MPs some of whom may be sitting on the naughty stool, get the proceedings from that and find out what was what. Then I think the Prime Minister should have called a general election and then we talk about Brexit. And that's how the timetable should have gone. That's the right and proper way to go about things. And I'm just wondering, have our leaders lost the sense of what's right and what's proper? So we'll be looking at that tonight. Also, children, how many children should you be allowed to have? Allowed. Do you like that? There's always some sort of laws, some sort of bigwigs telling us what to do. And what I'm thinking, we can either go the way of some eastern countries and only have one child per couple, or we can look at uh, the Catholic Church's philosophy that every child is a gift from God, and you can have as many as you like. And then there will be more to look after us. So we're talking about that as well. Giuseppe Bichetti and uh, four others have shared the video. Thomas Dreghorn's watching. Giuseppe is watching. Denny McLaughlin's watching. I think we should get our money recognised before we take that step. Yes, I mean, Scottish money, of course, is legal tender. In fact, more so because um, it's there as the fiduciary issue. There's a big one for you. Paul Wright's watching, bring back the dinosaurs, says Derek Kloss. I don't know if you saw a program last night, Derek, about rocks that were three billion years old. Now, we've got rocks down at the park here, and um, they are 325 million years old, so just slightly younger than my good self. But having said that, three billion years and apparently it was a meteor strike that did away with the dinosaurs in this country. So there you go. Um, all these folk having 15 kids and beyond is a joke, says Angie Thompson. Two would be plenty. I see where you're coming from. Already we have our money recognised, but you can't spend Scottish cash down south. Yes, Shug, that's just ignorance on behalf of the shops, what they should do on the television programmes, mainstream media, put themselves to some good use. 
and uh, actually look at uh, educating people on Scottish money. I've been into petrol stations, as I say, down south. I do a lot of work down south. I've been into petrol stations, and people say, Ooh, no, not petrol, say fuel stations now, of course. And ooh, can I take this and, and what have you? A lot of nonsense. So there we are. Shug is telling us about a particular party. He's the only party to trust. I'm not going to be too party political, guys, because I'm not a party political person, as you know. I'm not really a political animal, but I do like to see what is right and what is fair. And I don't know if you saw the, the Prime Minister, Mrs May, the Prime Minister of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and uh, she was at the Village Hall in Crathis. And the rumour that's reaching me is allegedly the Village Hall um, does not have a, a mandate for political meetings. So there you are. But there was um, a, a gathering of some people. It was put down as a children's party. And one gentleman had gone along expecting a children's party. And of course, he got another party that he wasn't so keen on. Felt a little bit ashamed, I think. Dino the Duck, the gas stations. Good for you, Dino. Dinosaurs roamed for 125 million years. Yes, yes, you'll still see them about in Edinburgh, Dino. So there you are. Good evening, Scotty. Dinky do, says Craig Gordon. Fantastic. Lovely to have you with you. John Paul Preston. Tremendous to have you. Hi, Scotty, says John Paul. Hi, John Paul, says Scotty McClue. Now, guys, a lot's happening on the social media front, so you really need to stick with me. Keep the numbers up on Facebook. Sometimes I see a little drop in the numbers. That's down to you guys not sharing everything. It's lovely of you to like things and to love things. But please, share, 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 share. That's the important thing. However, the numbers are shooting up on other broadcast platforms. So it is a tremendous thing. We are building the world's top talk show. And tremendous it is as well. Tell everybody about it. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform, the big one, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone is talking about. Social media is absolutely buzzing with Scotty McClue's show. So there you go. Also, thank you to everybody who has GoFunded me. I'm wanting to raise £5,000 before tomorrow night. So this weekend has been about raising funds. I've got uh, about £335 on GoFundMe and a substantial amount on PayPal. But you can decide. You can either go PayPal or GoFundMe and stick in what you can, guys, so that I can build and build and build. Very, very important. Please don't pass me by on the other side. Uh, don't you think all political parties lie to get their own way, says George? George, it would appear that way. That speech that Gordon Brown made before Indy Ref won, I don't think he should have been permitted to make that speech. That's what I think. And I think that the media should probably start to, um, you know, lay out their stall very early on and declare any interest. See, the beauty, if you go fund me, and I want you to do that, I will build you a media, right? An unbiased media, a factual media, a media where it all stretches in front of you, a media for you, the way the media should be, and not just to enrich some individual that wants to have the most dollars or what have you, and is prepared to give you a duff service in exchange. Scotty McClue has been a public servant for 33 years. So there you go. Theresa May has to go. She's ruining everything. Hopefully her and her bankers get chucked out of Downey Street, says John Paul. Uh, listening from Enterprise in USA, Daniel Adams, Dinky Doo, listening in America there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Scotty McClue Show, live on Facebook Live. Uh, Scotty, G. Daniel Adams, give him a shout out from America, he's a good friend of mine, says Angie Thompson. We've just done that, Angie. We look after our own on here, on Scotty McClue, you know. So tell everybody about it. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Scotty McClue is on at 10, broadcasting live 
on Facebook Live. The European Union are trying to influence this election by playing hardball. They know there's half the population that want to stay part of the EU. It's all smoke and mirrors, says Ian Walker. I think there's certainly an element of smoke, and I think there are a few mirrors, Ian. I think you're absolutely right. And our job is to unravel the smoke and mirrors so that we can see exactly what's going on. It will, of course, be geared up for big business, following the money, and then those who have put their snouts into the trough will be well rewarded while the rest of us struggle. Having said that, you know, it depends on your values in life and how much emphasis you put on money. We know we can't take it with us. You could, I suppose, put it into your coffin or burn it at the crematorium, but we know that it can't be taken with us. So it surprises me when people say, you know, he's on a 20 million bonus, don't you? And I think, well, what is he actually going to do with that? Take the wife and family out? Well, he doesn't have time. I heard him on the phone to his wife earlier saying, I don't, uh, not going to make it tonight, I think. Business, office. Mm. Uh, Dina the Doug, I think I'll go out for a fag. Dina the Doug, you will not go out for a fag. McClue has spoken. They are not good for you. Uh, did you see the wee Korean man and Trump on the news? <coughs> right, having a carry on. So there you are, says Angie Thompson. Very, very interesting, Angie, what's going on there. Of course, President Trump has just celebrated his first 100 days. And uh, I don't think it's all been sweetness and light, to be quite honest. Some of it is own doing, some of it not. Uh, I don't think Theresa May has any mirrors in her house. So there we are. Right, there's no point. Guys, try and not get personal about any politician. All right, try and not get too personal. People have political differences, but try and not get too personal about it. You know, I don't want somebody to disagree with me politically and then think, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call him Specky. See if he likes that. I'll call him Bonnet. You know, it's, it's not about that. So try and lay off the personal stuff because it just does you down. It makes you look small, right? People who start the personal insults could get under the door wearing a top hat. So there we are. Our grandfathers and great-grandfathers fought in two world wars to keep Germany out of power. And all the EU does is let them call the shots politically. Well, the whole thing is that the EU has probably been responsible for keeping the peace. It's one thing having an argy-bargy or seeing Mr Farage stand up and insult them in his speeches. But... I have to say to you that we never, ever, 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 ever want war again. And I know that some irresponsible, half-witted people who have managed to wriggle themselves into positions of power are starting to bang the drum and blow the trumpet. But I'll be absolutely honest with you, war is so damaging that I think we should channel the money into other things. It's because the big money is in manufacturing arms and giving them out to people. Arms and fire water. Scotty, I hope you're well, says Alec Robertson. Are you standing as an MP? Well, I didn't get the thumbs up from you all. A lot of you said no, and some of you were actually looking after me, which I thought was very good of you. Uh, did you see the comedian in Britain's Got Talent? He was funny, Captain. He was from Ghana, and so good. Yes, I did. I sent him round my Facebook because I thought it was excellent. His jokes were very, very good, and his style was good. So I agree with you, Captain. Absolutely big time. Uh, Denny even, stupid spell checker. Sorry, Scotty. I'm not voting because they haven't done anything about the minefield of dog poop round here. It's worse than the D-Day landings, dodging the dog poop. Yes, I remember going to one or two places and there was a fair bit of dog poop around. Very strange. Uh, I have dogs, as you know, and I'm always very fastidious. So there you are. Um, I don't have nothing personal about uh, the Prime Minister. I just don't like her fashion sense. And I generally have a dislike for Tories. Well, yes, I can see where this comes from. There is 
a lot of dislike for Tories. There's certainly no place for it in Scotland. You know, they're very, very little truck with the Scots. And I think they need to take that on board. And the British Prime Minister needs to acknowledge our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful leader, who I think would make an excellent Prime Minister of the whole lot. So there you are. Hi, Scotty. Do you still visit Mary Hill? Yes, I do, Martin. I do. When I was uh, a young student and uh, in and out of work, I can remember sitting in Dawes Home Park one Saturday afternoon and I felt something brush on my arm. And uh, I was a bit down about it because I couldn't seem to get any work organised. And um, I looked down and he was a squirrel. And I went to stroke him and he, he sort of ducked down and said, no, 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 you don't stroke me. You just leave me and let me sit here. And he sat there and I looked at him and I thought, he's so beautiful. I thought, if this little guy can survive, so can I. So the squirrel was a source of tremendous inspiration in Dawes Home Park on a Saturday afternoon. Right, um, the Shogdite, says Nivag. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ruth the Moon Scotty, it suits her. <laughs> we love Mary Hill, we really do. Um, I like dog poop on the pavements. It lets you know you've walked into a bad scheme. <laughs> what are you like? Good stuff, says Martin Gregg. Now, uh, one of the subjects I'd like to talk to you about, the old firm game. There was uh, quite a lot of argy-bargy and some not terribly nice social behaviour. So there you go. Anti-social behaviour. And I would like to reiterate, what I would like to see with Rangers and Celtic is that they amalgamate. And we have Glasgow United. And the sooner that happens, the better. Now, don't tell me that the Scots can't stand together at Ibrox or Parkhead, because they can. There's absolutely no problem with it. And that would get rid of all your sectarian stuff. And you should make it that you cannot go as a Rangers person unless you take a Celtic buddy with you. And you cannot go as a Celtic person unless you take a Rangers buddy with you. So there you are. The old red, white and blue in the hoops. The green and white. It was drink at the game, says Ian Walker. Yes, I know. I mean, I remember going into the doctors and he said, it might be the drink. And I said, well, I'll come back when you're sober then. Uh, now then, Colin Rogers watching. Dinky do, Colin. Ha 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 ha, says Derek Kloss. The squirrel said, this man's drunk, says Ian Walker. No, I wasn't. Saturday afternoon, I was out for a walk. And uh, I was going round Dawes Home Park. Oh, the racist remark against the Celtic player. Uh, there we are, when they came on the pitch. Celtic supporters chucked bananas, says Andrew Thompson. Yes, well, I'm not pointing the finger at one side or the other. I just think they need to stand together and get together and stop all that and just enjoy the game. Uh, hello, keep on rocking in the free world, Scotty, says Colin Roger. I will, Colin. I will dinky-do. Now, time for a share. Oh, gosh, we're past time. Time flies when you're enjoying yourself, folks. Share, 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 share. Get the sharing done. Tell everybody, get typing, folks. Type, 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 type. Scotty McClure is live on Facebook Live. And get the numbers up and get sharing. I wonder if I made some of you lazy from watching the program live by uh, having catch up. So there you are. You tell me, though. Keep the Rangers and Celtic separate, says Steve Burrows. Why, Steve? You haven't said why. You need to give old Scotty McClure a reason if you're saying keep them separate. They're both as bad as each other. You can't have an orange lily without a green stem. You're absolutely right. I mean, they enjoy the banter, but of course the banter's become unpopular uh, in official circles. You know, they, no, no, can't say that. No, no, can't say that. And all that kind of nonsense. They used to just do it, you know. They used to just belt it out. Uh, so there you go. Dawes Home Park. I used to go up there, Scotty. The squirrel will nibble on your nuts. Lol, says Denny McLaughlin. Do you know the dog, Scotty? Someone's nicked my homeless and hungry sign. Oh, well, I hope they put that back. We're good to see. Probably somebody's borrowed it for themselves, do you know? So give them a wee loan of it. Uh, do you like the snooker, Scotty? Higgins is doing well. Scotland, very proud just now. I remember when I worked in uh, television, and uh, it was independent television, so 15 ITV companies, 
and I was the late night announcer at one of the companies and the controller, the transmission controller, the man that makes, or the lady that makes everything happen, uh, the person, the person that makes everything happen, <laughs> got to get that politically correct there, uh, came, came in and said, would you do the announcement for the snooker now? It's going national, so make sure you get it right. And uh, it's taking the scenic route, so it's going through us. We're actually transmitting it, so if you can do the announcement. And, of course, it came to me, and I said, now we go over to the Guild Hall in Preston, where Steve Higgins is winning 15 frames to one, or whatever was the announcement. And I thought to myself, this is wonderful, because this microphone is actually live to the whole country. Amazing. So there you are. Scotty, what did you have for your dinner? This is Derek Kloss. Ah, I had, of course, excellent health food. A little bit of sausage and egg. Very nice. Um, voice and TV face for radio. LOL, says Martin Gregg. Yes, that's an old one, Martin. But when I was reading the news on television, because I worked for television companies for a long time as a newscaster and a journalist, and um, what I used to do, I said to the boss one morning when he was in, he said, you've only got 30 seconds, I need to go because we're having a good going chat. And I said, yep, okay, thanks, do I look okay? I said to him as he went out, because I was about to go live, bang, the big lights come on and millions can see you. And uh, he said, well, that's what you look like. And I thought, he's absolutely right. At first I thought it was rather harsh, a little bit cruel, but that's what I look like. If you've got a problem with me, that's your problem. So there you go. Uh, the local derby, Scotty, we've got to keep it like that, says Steve. Why? Why, Steve? I, uh, as no a lollipop man now at schools, it's a road crossing assistant, says Angie. That's right, because you could have either gender seeing the children across the road. Michael McGuigan's watching Dinky Doo, McClure, Magic FM. Yes, indeed, Magic FM. Uh, what about the rise in food banks? Is it not awful? We're one of the richest countries in the world. George, the food banks are political. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm in a privileged position when I get to hear things. And, uh, you know, you have to keep quiet about them. And uh, I can remember when somebody said, here's what's happening. There's a massive, massive recession coming because they're going to bail out the banks. And they need all the money for that. And then the guy said there will be food banks. This is serious, serious stuff. There will be food banks, particularly in Scotland. We will struggle to feed our children. And I thought this is absolutely dreadful. So it's purely political. The austerity thing. There would be very, very little austerity in the House of Commons. You see, when there was real austerity during the First World War, they put off the heat in uh, the Houses of Parliament. They put off the heat in places like Buckingham Palace. And the old king and that lot were shivering away. You know, old Queen Mary was shivering away. And they were eating fish cakes and things like that. So they were part of the austerity. So I think when you heard things like the Tories saying, we're all in this together, you then have to say, okay, we need to see that every Tory is feeding their child from the food banks. We need to see that all the Tories' children are running about looking for uh, for, for uh, clothing and shoes and things like that if we're all in it together. But by stealing everybody's money and giving it all to the banks so you can still pay the bonuses, millions and millions of pounds to the bankers, rather than say to them, right, we're going to stop you from going bust, but that's it. And you issue bonds to the people to say that you have got their money. Okay, now that's what should have happened if things were done rightly and properly. This is what I mean. Since Margaret Thatcher, there's been a tremendous amount of greed um, by the so-called elite. And of course, people in the country, the miners, the unions, the whole working thing, the working class, I don't like to use the word class, but the working class have really been under the cosh. And that's bad, bad news. So there you go. And of course, you know, you can't say that there's a great opposition down in London. Scotland's separate. Scotland needs to go independent and will go independent. And then it's out of that. And it's a different debate. It's a different conversation. 
Uh, Scotty, you should get your GoFundMe advertised more. Why not make a wee poster that people can download and print out and plaster around the town? Yes, I do have that, actually, John Paul. Um, people shouldn't be working for benefits. Everybody will need benefits one day in a lifetime for people and should be secured, says Ian. Yes, I agree. I remember when we bailed out the banks, they said that every taxpayer paid... Uh, shared £16,000 to bail them out. I want to know where my share certificate is and how can I cash it in, says Denny McLaughlin. I see your point, Denny. I see exactly where you are coming from. We should be looking at this whole thing because the people got their money taken away. And what really swung the no vote in the last Indie Ref was the fact that people felt threatened that they might lose their pension, which was a complete myth, because the pensions are universal, so there wouldn't have been a problem with it. There you go. Shocking. Um, why do we send money abroad when we've got homeless people here who need help, says Steve Burrows. Steve, I had the discussion with somebody when I said, can you go fund me this weekend? I need £5,000. And, um, and I mean, we're well on our way there. You'll see there's something like, I think it was £335 already in the GoFundMe fund. But this guy said, what about giving to charities and the sick and that? And I said, look, if you hang on to your pound and give it to a homeless person, then they might have something to eat today. If you fund my media setup, millions could get fed because you and I can discuss what's happening in the world. Can you see the big picture? Can you see the value? Um, I had to use food banks, says Angie. Um, yes, I saw that one, Angie. Um, why do we send money abroad? Do you know what annoys me? Are the people on benefits are getting facelifts and boob jobs. Well, they maybe need to know. I would put a stop to facelifts and boob jobs. To be quite honest, I've never had a boob job and I've never had a face lift either, as you can see. Uh, Scotty, everyone in Britain gives to the Royals 51 pence. That's millions. And she won't show her tax. Time to get rid. No, 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 Ian Walker. Again, you're not seeing the big picture. You need to go on to YouTube and get Scotty McClue informs the nation about the monarchy, educates you about the monarchy. That money going in, a lot of it goes to the administration of the monarchy. And I told you, don't be distracted. Don't be sidelined by the concept of doing down the crown because you've got a perceived um, chip, or because you've got a chip on your shoulder about the perceived state of the monarchy. These guys are very, 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 very hard working. Yes, they're well paid because they bring in billions to the country. So don't take your eyes off the ball because of the roar of the crowd, Ian. Um, these uh, houses are owned by you and I. The Queen does pay tax, uh, and she's paid tax for, I think, about uh, 20 years now, or something like that, 30 years. But here's the rub that people don't realise because they don't know their history. King George V, yes, the country was about to go bust after the First World War. And King George V said, what's up? And they said, your majesty, we're about to run out of dosh. And he said, well, look, I've got some money which I'll give over to the country, but I don't want to be paying tax on it as well. And they said, right, let's do a deal. And that's the background to the whole royal setup. So you need to know your backgrounds. It's very, very important. So the king did a tremendous favour to the country at the time because he was a great old guy, gruff old boy, old school, hard on his children, which wasn't so good. But, um, you know, he got the job done. Incredible. George V, he got the job done. Uh, I love the British royal family, says Laurie Lieber. Laurie, so do I. I think they are tremendous. They do a wonderful job, and I do not want 
um, the Scottish uh, parties to get distracted by that and think, oh, I need rid of the monarchy. That's just a lot of nonsense, and it's a distraction. There's no connection between 1603 and 1707. By all means, split the parliaments. That would make complete sense in this day and age. But you never interfere with the crowd, okay? And so there we are. The Queen looks like my wee old granny. It's just the Queen doesn't have the hat uh, that she looked like uh, a dead budgie. I miss her, and I've been searching everywhere for a calendar of the Queen. So there you are. I'm sure they will be about Angie, I can tell you. In the 1960s, the royal family were on TV begging for money, says Denny McLaughlin. No, they weren't begging for money, Denny, but somebody in the royal household thought it would be rather a good idea for them to take part in a documentary. Whether it was a good idea or not, I don't know. I remember watching it. 1969 black and white documentary uh, about the royal family it was fabulous it was great stuff they are lovely people uh, so there we are now i wish i could get a council house like hers says gordon riley gordon riley you really really actually don't wish you could get a house like hers i think there's 463 rooms in buckingham palace there are serious uh, fabric challenges shall we say serious challenges to the fabric in there to the architecture the queen was doing a knighting ceremony one day and a massive piece of cornice which would have been held up by wire came crashing down now nobody was injured but that cornice is big big stuff in the ballroom at buckingham palace i can tell you that for nothing so you're talking a, a house that looked rather grim that house until the 1930s if you see videos of king george the fifth funeral it's coming out from a different place it looks like a a big railway station but of course it was built for the um the duke of buckingham so there you go buckingham house it was actually and i think it was about five million quid in today's money uh, so there you go <laughs> there's your dominoes scotty uh, the Queen's worth the cost. The connections she facilitates with the Commonwealth countries, such as Australia and Canada, are worth her wage alone. Scotland would be weaker without the Queen. Yes, absolutely, John Paul. It would indeed. And she is 50% Scots. Her mother was pure Scots. And if you've got enough Scot in you, then there's things that you can do as a person. The Scots are a tremendous amount. And uh, the lovely thing about Her Majesty the Queen and her dear husband, Prince Philip, there's no side to them. You know where you are with them. And that's what matters. Lovely people. Uh, so there you go. Right, so I mean, please don't get distracted. And I don't want the whole idea of an independent Scotland to be challenged because people think we don't want the monarchy with it. Not a problem I can assure you, bring the crown and the Bible with you. Now then, who have we got here? Scotty, I found a wee board with holes in it from the World War. I found out it's called a cribbage board. You play with matchsticks. Have you heard about it? Yes, I've heard about playing cribbage. I haven't actually do it on a little board with the matchsticks. They probably played it in the shelters during the Second World War. So there you go. So please look kindly upon the royals. And uh, I remember when the cabinet, uh, I remember hearing about when the cabinet had approached King George V, because the king had a lot more to do with the day-to-day -day administration of the country in those days. And he said, um, look, I don't want another war. I didn't start the last one. And if you start a war, I have a good mind to go down to Trafalgar Square and wave the red flag myself. And that, of course, shut them all up like that. Thought, wow, we've crossed a line with the king. He was, he was angry with them for uh, talking about having another war. Uh, so there you are. Scotty, yes. Um, I can't see how the royals, some people look at the games. Um, now, they're all speaking about mental health. Uh, and London Marathon, they clapped the exhausted guy that was helped in by another, says Andrew. Yes, Andrew, quite right. You raised some very good points. Guys, 
If you've just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, and very privileged to be so. And we're live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. We're global. If you're tuning in right now, let us know where you're watching. That would be superb. Social media, it's moving all the time. We have a big following now on Periscope. So go on to Periscope, go on to Twitter, go on to all the Facebook pages, and please spread everything around. Also, go fund me, guys. I'm trying to raise £5,000 before tomorrow night. So if you've got a spare fiver or a tenner, stick it into Scotty McClue's GoFundMe page. Just go to the website, GoFundMe, put in Scotty McClue, Take your plastic and stick in a fiver or a tenner. If you prefer PayPal, get onto the Scotty McClue website and stick a fiver or a tenner into PayPal. Yeah, there's also a PayPal me, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue forward slash 10 quid. Off you go. There we are. Big Donald's half Scots. We're on the verge of nuclear war, says George Raffin. No, George, I don't think Donald will be allowed to press the button. Janet Muir says, Hi, Scotty. Hi, Janet. And dinky do to you. Lovely to hear from you. I think on Sundays you will see France give the elite a black eye, Le Pen will win, and the EU will be in a spin. So there we are. Well, France, of course, I can remember when I was a schoolboy uh, in the early 70s, and France had been in trouble since the Second World War politically. And I can remember a cartoon showing the French Parliament, and one guy was nudging another one and saying, Wake up! You've been Prime Minister three times! So there you go. Uh, so excellent stuff. Um, that's good. I could get a grant and use a few rooms. Uh, let them out to the fat cats and let the homeless use them. Happy days. Get rid of the old pictures and flog them. No, you're making a mistake again, Gordon. The pictures are ours. When Prince Philip and the Queen married in 1947, and they'd moved into Clarence House, and I think that was the time when Prince Philip had um, got some paintings ordered up from the Royal Collection, and uh, the Queen said, we can't just do that. We have to get permission to get these pictures and what have you. So there you go. And uh, you need the stuff. It's set dressing. It looks great. Rab from Falkirk. I don't trust Nicola Sturgeon, says Rab. Rab, don't be knocking Nicola Sturgeon. She's doing a fantastic job. And remember, the people who slag Nicola Sturgeon are the other side very very interesting tell her to get on with the day job and never mind independence that's a line that the other side have evolved because nicola sturgeon is doing such a superb job scotland has never been better run than when alex salmond and nicola sturgeon were running it it's never been better run in 310 years so uh, the day job is being done, the independence will come, the money will flow in, and all will be well. If you think I'm living in cuckoo land, ask why we're on food banks when we send £40 billion a year to Westminster and get given back our pocket money. Mm. Has to stop. Another thing, put in for grants and get... Something or other, I can't see what you've got there. Why is the system not doing anything about that? People claiming benefits on a certain talk show. Yes, they are. You're quite right. It's not the Scotty McClure show either. Why don't people just lay off the royals? Look at the what Prince Edward and Harry put in, says Steve. Steve, you're quite right. These are good guys. And if they turned up, they are as nice as ninepence. I would not want their job. And I very much doubt you would either. But remember, I've seen exactly what they do, so I know what I'm talking about. Alan Brown's watching in Washington, in the USA, one of the finest guys you could meet. 
Alan Brown, a very fine drama director in Washington there, just along from the White House. And I say to you, Alan Brown, dinky do to you from Scotty McClure in Scotland. Uh, so there you are, Denny McLaughlin. Just trying to make our EU exit tough to ward off other countries from exiting. I know there's other countries who want to leave. If it's made easy, they know the other countries will just drop out. Now, it was interesting. I was listening to the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, on um, television this morning with uh, the very fine journalist, Robert Peston. And um, they were chit-chatting away and observing the niceties and what have you. And she was saying that she felt that the other parties were trying to frustrate her Brexit negotiations. And I thought, my dear lady, has nobody informed you that this is politics? The other parties are wanting to frustrate your Brexit moves because they don't want Brexit. They don't want to leave. Article 50 should never have been triggered until we had discussed it properly. You can't just go on the whim of a few people when it's a competition, you know, exuding from the uh, cat fight that the Tory party had, the internecine fighting that's going on in the Tory party. I mean, I know it's going on in the Labour party, but, uh, you know, it's very, very uh, abundant in the Conservative party to the extent that they're all argy and fighting each other. And that's where this leaving Europe came from. By all means have a referendum to get a gauge, to get an idea on what the people are saying. But you don't need to act on it. You don't need to act on it. And it's not too late to go back to Europe and say, listen, see that letter I gave you about Article 50? Tear that up. Rip it up. We're staying. So there you go. It's hard to have faith in any political party. They all seem to lie, says George Raffin. Absolutely, and this is one of the reasons Scotty McClure would struggle to be a member of Parliament, because I'm not interested in lying. You know, I think people should hear the truth. Dinky do, Scotty, says Wadge. Wadge hat hashmi. Fantastic to have you with us, Wadge. Dinky do to you. William Rose is watching. A free Scotland and then a new council tax for houses that are priceless, like my moral. <coughs> Let's say 50 million a month. That makes us free and rich in one go. Gordon Riley, you're barking up the wrong tree. It's hard enough to keep these massive houses in repair. And you need them in repair because they are our family silver. I think Balmoral actually does belong to the Queen, but it's it's one of the houses that gets handed down to the monarch. So it's the residence of the monarch. I mean, don't quote me on that because I don't know the most recent business arrangements, tax arrangements, none of my business, none of our business, because these are personal arrangements. But I have a, I have a feeling that Balmoral is a private residence uh, just because of the nature of its background. Uh, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert had been invited to Lord Bredalbin's Taymouth Castle. I don't know if you've ever been up at Kenmore and seen Taymouth Castle. It was built about 1815. Massive, massive, beautiful castle. And um, Prince Albert and Queen Victoria were invited to Taymouth by Campbell of Bredalbin at the time, who in those days owned lands as far as you could see. And that's where they got the idea for Balmoral. And Balmoral actually was built uh, in 1854, I think it was. So I've got pictures of Balmoral going up, being constructed. The, there was an original small mansion house, and it was owned by, I think it was owned by the Queen's surgeon. And I think his name was Sir William something. And he choked on a fishbone and the property came up for sale, poor soul died. Anna Lil Johansson Lever, you're right, it does belong to the Queen, she says. Excellent, Anna, good stuff. Now you're getting to the point, says Gordon Riley. Scotty, you're in the minority when it comes to the Royals. Great minds think alike. Lol, time for you to jump ship. Ian, I shall not be jumping ship because you're the one not understanding the big picture the true picture i'm always saying to close friends of mine big picture thinking because they always look at the most direct line 
And I say, it's not always the direct line you take when you're making a journey. Free Scotland and the English will pick up the bill. It will be like being new to them. I think we just have to have a vote for the party that are lying the least amount. So perhaps we should connect lie detectors up. And when somebody tells a lie in the Houses of Parliament, you get ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. Oh, Mr. Speaker. So there you are. John Thompson's watching. Nice to see you here, Scotty McClue, says Anna Lil Johansson Lever. Dinky do to you, Anna Lil. And please send love to you. A very, very happy birthday to Laurie. Tremendous stuff. Uh, they own all the big pictures, says Ian Walker. Yes, but you've got to display them somewhere. I mean, our museums, our great museums, have got all these wonderful collections. And they have to be displayed. So there you are. In fact, if I remember right, there's a Nettlefold collection, and you think, Nettlefold? Where have I seen that name? And of course, there were Victorian screw manufacturers, Nettlefold's screws. You see them, you used to see them in the Ironmongers. Um, Scotty, did you hear that the Crown land was transferred to the Scottish Parliament early in April? April? There wasn't much media on that, says John Paul Preston. John Paul. The more I look at the so-called mainstream media, the more I think they're falling into the trap of fake news. That's what seems to be happening. Because, I mean, I can spot it a million miles off. I watch the telly and I see how it's angled against Scotland becoming independent. Because think about it. Say we took the public service broadcaster that we pay for. They just removed by direct debit my license fee last week. When I went to the bank, I thought I'd got a bit more than I actually had because the public service broadcaster had been in and taken the license money. Just whoosh! I would love a business like that where you just go and take the money off people. And they don't really have a C on it. I will do long, Susanna Lil Johansson. Thank you very much. Brilliant stuff. Bell will ring all day, says Gordon Riley. If you had a lie detector in the House of Commons, then you wouldn't be here hearing anything except the bell, probably. Fake news, says Craig. So I look at it, but the public service broadcaster in Scotland takes around £325 million a year out of Scotland. The budget for this new television channel that's been talked about is 30 million. The budget for the radio in Scotland is uh, 25 million, if I remember rightly, but don't quote me on that. Scotty, what do you think of the Gleska Labour Council? So there we are, says Ian Walker. I'm not getting into an argument about councils at the moment, Ian. I'm not going to be drawn into that. I mean, all councils have their challenges. So there we are. And I remember saying to somebody when we had Strathclyde Regional Council, and I spoke to a very senior officer in that, and I said, how did you find working in that council? And he said, just a lot of very nice people doing their best. So there you go. Louis Faber, Scotty, you need a lie detector sometimes. Louis Faber, I, I trust my people not to tell me lies. So this show doesn't need a lie detector. And obviously, I will always give you the truth. So there's no problem there. So disagree with you. How goes the fundraising, Scotty, says Laurie Lever. Not too bad, Laurie. People are cautious. I'm hoping to raise, we weren't going to raise five million, but I thought, take it in easy steps. Take baby steps. So I've set £5,000 for tomorrow night. I've said this is the weekend where we raise £5,000. We've got £335. Pounds at the moment, but I'm hoping people will start to say, no, 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 Scotty is definitely worth that. I can afford a five or a ten or twenty quid, stick it into the, and of course, you guys have been beautifully generous, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the wonderful, generous people 
who have gone to GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and popped in a fiver or a tenner or 25 or a hundred pounds. A hundred pounds from a beautiful person. You're talking about um, STV Glasgow's turned into STV2. It's the same channel, but at an expensive price as Angie. Well, I don't know that, Angie, so I shan't comment on that. But uh, I think the Scotty McClure show would go well on local television. Uh, no, it wasn't fake news, Scotty. Uh, well, maybe it was. I read it on the BBC. <laughs> right. Good for you, Todd Paul. Do you know the Doug lend me a fiver free your fun, Scotty? Craig Thomas Dockert is watching. Ian says, Scotty, the reason I go on about the Rawls is my ancestor was Guy Fox, and we don't hide our light under a bushel because somebody might find it. <laughs> I remember, as a joke, I hasten to add, somebody said, the last guy to have a good idea in the British Parliament was Guy Fox. <laughs> Amazing stuff. But there we are, poor old Guido. Guido Fox, uh, he was a Yorkshireman, actually, Guido Fox. Uh, Scotty, uh, come on, everyone, donate to Scotty. He's worth it. And more, says the wonderful Laurie Lever. I thank you, Laurie. Well, I feel I've been in entertainment for 40 years. I've set up radio companies, set up um, all sorts of different media companies, made fortunes for the big wigs at, uh, at, at, at media companies. I haven't benefited personally from it, but they have and uh, all that sort of thing so i think it's time now that we got going um you know it would help if we can do it while i'm still alive Laurie. uh so there we are come on folks start donating go to gofundme.com and just put in scotty mcclue s-c-o-t-t-i-e m-c-c-l-u-e and up it will come uh, i went out as guy fox in halloween i was nearly arrested for being a terrorist I think we should give up Guy Fawkes Night, Bonfire Night, because on religious grounds, and at that time, there were very, very um, sectarian things going on at a high level in this country, as you know. And what they're doing with Guy Fawkes is they're burning a Roman Catholic gentleman. And I do not think that is a good idea. So there we go. Uh, Scotty, what's going to be called... Bunnet Radio. What's it going to be called? Bunnet Radio. Now listen, I'm serious about this. What I would like to do, the uh, public service broadcaster knocked back a news at six o'clock because obviously they want to feed out their side of things to Scotland to try and get the Scots thinking, are we? Is that right? And all that sort of idea. So they're pumping out their side of news. So they didn't want the Scots to have a six o'clock news on the public service broadcaster. Now I'm suggesting that I do a six o'clock news on social media. And we'll get the figures up for that. If everybody knew it was on, we'll get the figures up for that. Now at the moment, it's very difficult to get the mainstream media to back me because they've got their own agenda. But if we can get the mainstream media, I mean, there was a while the mainstream media just would not leave me alone. Every single major newspaper, radio and television station wanted a piece of Scotty McClue. But at the moment, they think, oh no, he's, uh, he's for this independence. We'll need to give him the body swear because that would be balancing things up you know that would balance and we don't want to balance things we need to keep the union as much as possible that's what's going on with your mainstream media so when you see a headline in the paper about how well the unionist parties are doing and how poorly the independence parties are doing you can ignore that the reverse will be true that's why you've got that headline okay and um what do we got here why do we pay for a TV license? The BBC say they do not advertise when they actually do have ownership, and he mentions companies, and uh, different stations. So there you are. Uh, yes, indeed. I was dressed up as a surgeon, and I called a taxi to take me to a party in Cantine. I said to the driver, the royal mate, I sure enough, that's the direction he drove, lol. I had to put him right. I remember being at a fancy dress party 
and we were having a great time. The music was booming out, and uh, you know we had light refreshments and all the rest of it. And about four in the morning, I went to the door. We're letting guests in all night. Clowns were arriving, pirates, politicians, all that sort of stuff. And uh, these two guys arrived brilliantly dressed as police with radios and everything. It's superb. And I said, you guys look great. And you come, there. no, no, no. We're here to complain about the noise. You need to keep the noise. We've had complaints. <laughs> um, so there we are. Uh, do you think she's doing much for improving her vote? Uh, ban the TV licenses, Steve Burrows. If you ban the TV licenses, Steve, how would you actually fund a public service broadcaster? Or do we need a public service broadcaster? You see, the beauty about a public service broadcaster was that they could be trusted. They didn't have an agenda of their own. So they weren't following the agenda of a very, very wealthy business person. They were, they were free. We paid, and they made sure that everything was free of bias and was balanced. Now, the problem is, if you noticed, there was a huge spat between Downing Street and um, Broadcasting House at the start of the Iraq war, because obviously the BBC were trying to get the truth out, and Downing Street was saying, no, 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 you, you, you are not in charge here. We are. Now... Since the BBC started in 1922, there has been various spats between Downing Street and Broadcasting House. Because what they're trying to say is, who is in charge of this information? And Lord Reith was terribly good being a Scot. You know, I mean, he was, you know, he, he was a bit of a character and all the rest of it. But he was very, very good at saying to the government, the BBC decide what goes on the BBC, not you guys. And Churchill actually offered him £100, big money in those days, of his own money, if Reith would let him broadcast on the BBC and say his piece. And he said, no, we're not for sale. The BBC is not a commercial enterprise and it is not for sale. Our airtime is not for sale. And that was great. the general strike was a bit of a watershed as well, because the government were furious if the BBC didn't take their line and stay on message. And then you had wonderful people. And then Thatcher decided to interfere in the senior management set up the BBC, and she ordered that the director general be sacked. She said to Marmaduke Hussey, from uh, the Times newspapers, who was the chairman of the BBC at the time. She said to Duke Hussey, go and sack him. And that was a wonderful Scottish gentleman. Uh, so there you go. And, uh, and and that was just that was just wrong. That was the start of political interference again. But here's the rub. The BBC is run by governors. Now it's called part of the BBC Trust. But these people were chosen um, by the Queen, by Royal Charter, by the Queen, on the advice of the Prime Minister. So can you see where it's coming? But at that time, it was kept fairly quiet. But at the time of the Iraq War, both the Chairman and the Director General, who were friends of the Prime Minister at the time, had to step down from the BBC so that the BBC won the propaganda battle uh, to take us to war. So there you go. Um, TV license a rip-off. Anywhere else in Europe doesn't pay, and we do. Well, now we're out of Europe too. Bah, says Giuseppe Bichetti. Lol, says Ian Walker. I hope you get your 5,000, says John Paul Preston. Tremendous, John. I hope I do as well. I was at a Halloween party, and the police turned up at 2 a.m. I was addressed as Bob the Builder. I opened the door and asked if we could keep the noise down. I said, I think I could fix that. <laughs> Good for you. Scotty, you just write to the BBC, tell them you haven't got a TV, and they stop sending you correspondence. They're not allowed to contact you for three years. So there we are. We need a Sheralba channel. Uh, Scotty, how do you care so much about everything, says Andy. Andy, I study. See, I was broadcasting in the days when there was no internet. 
So you had to study and you had to have all the information at the tap of your head, as we say in Scotland. Another great show, Scotty. Truthful as always, says Steve. The BBC is corrupted. It's controlled and very biased now, sadly, says John Paul. John, you're entitled to your opinion. Now, do you see what you've all done? Please, I beg of you, go fund me. Take a fiver and stick it into the gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue.com. No, not dot com, scotty hyphen mcclue account. So gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue. Also get on to PayPal, paypal.me forward slash scotty mcclue or one word. So there you are. He knows a lot because he's a history teacher, says Angie Thompson. Well, there is that. Give us a song, Captain. Carpe diem. I have to dash, guys. I will give you the song. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a fabulous audience tonight. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for putting up with all the sharing. And thank you so much for GoFunding me. Lots more to come, guys. This is Scotty McClure saying, have a great week until we all meet again. Dinky-doo. And I'm going to sing the song because I know it winds you all up. <clears throat> goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Wither Zane. Au revoir and a cheerio. Scotty McClure has left the building. Dinky-doo!